Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me this week. So this week I'm going to be talking about the environmental impacts and energy consumption of AI tools and I'm going to use perplexity but I'm also going to use consensus to look at some research papers and what's out there to help us really understand the environmental impact that AI tools are having on sustainability. If you're interested in finding out more about the environmental impacts of AI tools, then please keep on watching. Okay, so let me just move myself out of the way. This is the question that I posed into perplexity. I selected the deep research option so that it could give me, you know, some more data, perhaps it could give me some more papers. So what is the research on how much energy AI tools use, including electricity, water, and all of the environmental factors? So something really broad. And um, what did Perplexity come up with? I'm a huge fan of Perplexity, I must say. I was watching the TED talk given by one of the co-founders and one of the reasons why they developed Perplexity was to really address human curiosity and asking questions. Like we're born really curious, we ask lots of questions, and so they wanted to build a platform that would encourage that curiosity. Okay, so the environmental impact of AI tools is a growing concern, which not many of us are aware of, I think, particularly regarding energy consumption, carbon emissions, and water usage. So research highlights several critical aspects of how AI contributes to environmental degradation while also presenting potential solutions for mitigating these impacts. So let's have a look at the energy consumption. So AI systems actually require substantial amounts of electricity, primarily sourced from non-renewable energy sources, okay? So the training of large AI tools can consume thousands of megawatts of electricity. For instance, training a model like GPT-3 is estimated to use approximately 1,300 megawatts, equivalent to the annual energy consumption of about 130 homes in the US. So more advanced models such as GPT-4 reported, reportedly use up to 50 times more electricity than their predecessors. Okay, so the demand for energy from AI is projected to increase significantly. By 2026, AI's energy consumption should, could grow to exceed that of a small country. That's worrying. With estimates suggesting it may account for around 6% around of total US electricity usage. This escalation poses challenges for local electrical grids and contributes to higher greenhouse gas emissions, particularly in regions that are reliant on fossil fuels for electricity generation. That's one of the impacts of uh, training AI tools. What about carbon emissions? So the carbon footprint, okay, so the carbon footprint associated with AI is substantial. Training a single AI model can emit more than 626,000 pounds of carbon dioxide, equivalent nearly five times the lifetime emissions of an average car. That's very worrying. The cumulative emissions from AI tools are expected to rival those with the entire airline industry within a few years if current trends continue. As AI adoption grows across various sectors to its contribution to global greenhouse gas emissions is anticipated to rise sharply. I'm not saying don't use AI tools, but let's not use AI tools in a frivolous manner. So, you know, we're not going to just be importing and generating lots of different images for the sake of generating images. Let's try and be really intentional and thoughtful about what we generate and take into consideration the these environmental factors. So the water usage is something that not many people are aware of, but there's a significant water footprint. So the operation of data centers that support AI requires large volumes of water for cooling purposes. Additionally, the production of hardware necessary for AI systems involves resource intensive mining processes that further strain water resources. So for instance, while a single Google search consumes about half a millimeter of water, using ChatGPT can require up to 500 milliliters for every five to 50 prompts due to extensive energy needs associated with this operation. So we, I, I think a lot of people are not aware of the water usage. 
just looking at the comparison between a Google search and, and a ChatGPT search and the difference in water really makes me think about not just using AI tools in a frivolous manner. I have to, I have to repeat to be really intentional. Okay, so what are some environmental mitigation strategies? All right, renewable energy adoption. Yes. So, you know, hopefully companies are committing to using renewable energy sources for powering the data centers. Google and other tech giants have set ambitious goals to achieve net zero emissions and become water positive by replenishing more water than they consume. Wonderful. Efficiency improvements. So advances in data center design and cooling technologies aim to reduce energy overhead significantly. So for example, improvements in power usage effectiveness has been reported from 2.0 down to as low as 1.1 in some facilities. Okay, optimized AI tools is another way that we can protect the environment. Researchers are working on developing more efficient AI architectures and algorithms that require less comp computational power and energy. So techniques such as weight pruning and quantization help reduce the size and resource demands of AI models. And then of course we have to have regulatory frameworks. Governments and organizations are beginning to implement regulations requiring companies to report their energy consumption and environmental impacts associated with their AI system. So for example, the EU's AI Act is one such initiative that I've talked about in previous videos, and it's aimed at ensuring accountability in AI's environmental footprint. Okay, so let's go over to consensus. So I have I have a subscription to Consensus and Consensus had, was really interesting because Consensus looks at research papers, right, specifically. So what did Consensus say? The environmental impact of AI tools, including the energy consumptions and associated factors like electricity and water use is a growing concern. AI models, particularly those involving deep learning, require significant energy contributing to greenhouse gas emissions and other environmental impacts. So they talk about the energy use in AI models. Um, and this is really interesting. This is often referred to as red AI, which prioritizes performance over environmental impact. Okay, we talked about the carbon footprint, the energy consumption of AI models linked to CO2 emissions, which vary depending on the energy source used. Efforts to use ARM-based architectures and low precision training can reduce energy use without sacrificing accuracy. And then it says water usage. While specific data on water usage is less frequently discussed, it's not something that's discussed publicly in the mass media, the energy consumption of AI indirectly affects water resources as power generation often involves significant water use. Okay, so I think it was nice to have that comparison. I'm just gonna read the conclusion here of what Consensus has given me. AI tools have a significant environmental footprint due to their high energy consumption, which contributes to carbon emissions and indirectly affects water resources. However, strategies like green AI and the use of efficient architecture can mitigate these impacts. AI also holds potential for enhancing energy efficiency and supporting sustainability efforts across various sectors. So I just wanted us to be really mindful about when we're using AI tools to be a little bit more thoughtful about the energy use and also the water use and the environmental impact that it has. I'm not saying don't use AI tools at all. Let's be more informed about the environmental impacts every time we use an AI tool. So thank you so much for joining me this week and I hope to see you next time.